The U.S. is talking about phasing out internal combustion engines by 2035. Some states are even proposing 2030. A key way they plan on doing this is by banning sales of any new combustion engine cars. They're calling it the ICE ban, meaning internal combustion engines, of course. But what about traditional cars that are still on the road? In other words, will the U.S. later change its policy to also ban existing gasoline cars? Today we're looking at what this means for you and whether you can get banned from driving your current gasoline car. We all know from history that government policies change and evolve over time. This is nothing new. There were policy changes with the Native American Indians and treaties with the government. A lesser known thing is a book ban. In October 1650, Puritan Government of America at the time burned William Pynchon's pamphlet, The Meritorious Price of Our Redemption. This was the first book burning due to a book ban. And this was before the U.S. adopted the First Amendment in 1791. Initially, the book bans and burnings were strictly reserved for books that went against religious values. But 200 years later, Congress revisited the criteria for banned books. This was in 1873. This is when Congress passed the suppression of trade in and circulation of obscene literature and articles of immoral use, also nicknamed the Comstock Acts. The purpose was to bar obscene literature from interstate commerce. Congress revisited the ban time and time again, changing the scope and criteria several times throughout the 19th, 20th, and 21st centuries. For example, some books about parenting style got banned because the style wasn't deemed agreeable on at the time. Once a book made it to the forbidden list, it was banned immediately. Today, the Constitution doesn't protect obscene literature from censure, and book bans happen on a library-by-library -library basis, mostly in school libraries rather than public libraries. In fact, did you know that since 2000, J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series received more banning requests than any other literary connection? Point is, policies change and evolve all the time. Existing gasoline cars that we own right now might not be under the radar at present. You might feel it's protected for now and in the next few years. But who's to say that one day in the future there won't be local legislation that will ban existing combustion engine cars? Here's another thing. While many agree in general to an ice ban, will policymakers always agree on the date? It's not inconceivable for the deadline to also get revisited and adjusted. Just look up north to our neighbor. For years in Canada, people needed a license to buy or own firearms or ammunition. In 2018, the Liberal government in Ontario proposed a requirement for vendors to keep records for 20 years. At the time, this meant you had to present a license when buying rifles or shotguns. But in May 2020, there was a shooting in Nova Scotia. That year, some 1,500 types of assault-style weapons were banned completely in Canada. It took effect immediately, without any warning. And if you already owned one of these firearms, you were given a temporary two-year amnesty. In other words, you had two years to dispose of it before you'd incur criminal liability. So who's to say if the 2035 ice ban will follow a similar pattern. Somewhere down the line, maybe we'll be giving amnesty to drive the gasoline cars we already own, which sounds all good and fine. But in that case, what it means is, ultimately, there'll be a looming deadline where it can be illegal to drive one. Even analysis and media have differing opinions about this ban anyway. Some say the ban is ambitious, others say it's unenforceable. A couple of years ago, 2020, California announced a plan to ban all new gasoline fuel cars by 2035. Right now, gasoline and diesel fuel vehicles in California are their biggest source of planet warming greenhouse gases, dangerous particles, and smog. Just last month in April, California even proposed an act with the intent to reduce greenhouse emissions by 384 million metric tons between 2026 and 2040. That's more than the total amount that California emitted in 2019. In this new proposed mandate, 35% of all new cars, SUVs, and small pickups sold in California must be zero emissions starting 2026. And that would then increase to 68% in 2030, and then ultimately reach 100% in 2035. But they would allow 20% of these vehicles to be plug-in hybrid. It's important to note that this rule doesn't apply to sales of pre-owned cars or gasoline power cars already on the roads. Believe it or not, only around 2% of all cars on California roads were zero emission in 2020. The zero emission vehicle proposal is now awaiting approval by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency before it can be implemented. By the way, did you know that at least 15 other states pledged to follow California's car standards on clean car rules? You're probably wondering if this means all U.S. states will implement the 2035 ban. Well, it used to be that states like Massachusetts and California's proposed bans were the earliest, but not anymore. Instead of 2035, some states have chosen an even sooner date for their ban. We're talking 2030, less than eight years away. Take a look at Washington State. A couple months ago in March, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee set a measure that's now officially known as House Bill 1204, HB 1204, or Clean Cars 2030. It bans the sale, purchase, or registration of any non-EV with the model year 2030 onward. But this ban doesn't only apply to cars bought in Washington, it even
even applies to cars purchased out of state and brought into Washington for registration. This ban won't just allow battery powered EVs though. Any vehicle powered by electricity would technically be allowed to purchase after 2030. For example, fuel cell vehicles. And this isn't the only first for Washington when it comes to this ban. It's also the first state to pass a gas engine car ban without any executive order. Now the interesting thing is that this bill was originally introduced by Washington Representative Nicole McCree. This was back in 2020. There were narrow margins and even wider debates, and many votes for and against it. It was finally vetoed by Washington Governor Jay Inslee. At one point, they were even trying to add amendments whereby the EV guidelines wouldn't take effect until the usage fee applied to 75% of all cars. Governor Inslee didn't agree. He believed that transportation was the state's greatest source of carbon emissions and that Washington state couldn't afford to link the important goal of reaching 100% zero emission vehicles to a separate policy that would take time to design and implement. In his own words, he hopes that this ban will move us away from the transportation system our grandparents imagined and towards the transportation system our great grandchildren dream of. Strong words. By the way, did you know that Inslee was actually a presidential candidate back in 2020? But he was ultimately rejected by Democratic voters who thought his policies were too aggressive or extreme. HB 1204 isn't the only combination of numbers and letters in the news headlines today. So is E15. E15 is a mixture of 15% ethanol and 85% gasoline. It contains 5% more ethanol than E10, which is the most common fuel used in the U.S. right now. Now, the reason that this is in recent news is because President Biden wants to suspend the ban on E15. Here's the thing. The fuel is associated with many negative environmental impacts, everything from producing more air pollutants from its combustion to increased chemical runoff from the corn that it comes from. Let's talk about ethanol. Put simply, it's a byproduct of corn and gasoline. And that's what you're putting in your tank when you fill up the pump. They say it inhabits a quirky role in the energy market. Ethanol is also known as biofuel. The more ethanol is used in fuel, the more opportunity there is for the farmers to sell corn. That's why farmers in Iowa and Nebraska like it so much. Logically, oil companies disagree. They argue against it because of the extra cost to add it into the mixture. Now, there's also things such as E10. So what's the difference between E10 and E15? E10 refers to the 10% ethanol in the mixture of gasoline as opposed to 15% ethanol in E15. The Iowa Farm Bureau has actually publicly argued that higher ethanol content makes gasoline cheaper for drivers. They also believe it's better for the environment. But there's one small problem. From June to mid-September, E15 fuel is unavailable to drivers. That's why not every gas station sells E15. They just don't consider it a worthwhile investment to build an infrastructure for holding something you can only sell half the year. But there's a reason for that. Ethanol is basically alcohol. We all know alcohol evaporates quickly. Putting more ethanol in the gasoline makes the fuel itself evaporate quicker. When ethanol and gasoline are blended, it becomes a more volatile fuel. Fuel evaporates easily, and the evaporated particles react with sunlight to create hazardous smog. The EPA actually regulates what can be sold because of its association with smog and other air quality hazards. Another factor is that the land needed to grow corn is also associated with reducing biodiversity in soil and chemical runoffs. By the way, did you know that motorcycles, heavy-duty vehicles, boats, snowmobiles, chainsaws, and gasoline lawnmowers are all things which E15 is not recommended? And if you own a passenger vehicle made before 2001, you shouldn't use E15 in it either. But guess what? The ban has actually been lifted before. Biden isn't the first. Ex-President Donald Trump lifted the summer ban of the E15 fuel. This was done in a bid to farmers during his trade war with China. The lifting of the ban lasted two years. And then a federal appeals court struck down the rule change from the EPA. This ban was also lifted back in 2017 for victims of Hurricane Harvey in Texas. And now Biden plans to suspend the ban completely. This begs the question, why? As you all know, oil prices have been hitting the roof for weeks and months worldwide. Last month, Biden ordered the release of 180 million barrels of oil over six days. The purpose was to help ease gasoline prices. Didn't work out all that well, but... And then he decided to lift the summer E15 ban to help lower the price of gas even further. You can judge yourself if it was a smart decision or not. The Biden administration estimates that gas prices will be about 10 cents cheaper after the EPA waives E15 during the summer months. Realistically, other analysts say prices could be 5 to 10 cents cheaper. Either way, with the combustion engine ban fast approaching, the government will need to get creative real fast to manage gas prices. Even the EU is jumping on the combustion engine banning bandwagon. They're currently considering a large number of new climate change laws. These laws would end up prohibiting fossil fuel cars by requiring 100% cutoff in all carbon dioxide emissions by, you guessed it, 2035. But here's the thing that some people recognize. There's no way the government can succeed with the bans by 2030. There are just too many factors working against them. First of all, let's talk about the sheer lack of charging stations for electric cars. Take California, for example. Almost 1.2 million charges will be needed for the 8 million 
nine zero emission vehicles expected in California by the year 2030. But as of right now, there are only about 70,000. There are an extra 123,000 on the way, but that's still a far cry from 1.2 million. The infrastructure just won't be able to support it at this rate. There are even those who deny the ban completely, like Washington State Senate Transportation Committee Chair Mark Leas. In his own words, you can still buy a horse in Washington and you can still travel by horse if you want to, meaning that just because new technology comes out doesn't mean old technologies will be instantly banned. Another skeptic is Professor Stephen Holland of the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. He thinks that if we ban too early, it's bad. That if we just get rid of gas vehicles and EVs aren't good substitutes for gas vehicles, everyone's going to be driving around in really inferior cars. And this will translate into a massive deadweight loss, according to calculations. But there are also other factors, like the war in Eastern Europe, the impact to oil prices and supplies, and the lack of significant progress in EV battery technology. All in all, there are too many things stacked against the initiative. Rising gas prices are pinching us. It's true. You think this is bad? Realistically, America hasn't even started feeling the impact to our economy. Costs for food, electricity, and other necessary things will continue to rise. In the weeks and months to come, when things get even harder, I forecast that emissions in green cars will be the last priority on any consumer's mind, let alone our government's laws. But now you tell me, are you planning on switching to an EV before 2035? Who will you hang on to your combustion engine car? What do you think about the combustion engine ban? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for your support.